What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the part 4 of a story where Issei broke up with his harem and decided to leave. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more informations. Now, let's get into part 4. Gremory Household, 9.30 AM. Issei along with his family and the Gremory family minus Rias, were having a proper conversation, as the Asada spoke. When you first were presumed dead, we actually thought we lost you. Then 3.5 years later, we found out that from Serzich's that you were alive. Zeocitus looks towards Juniper and speaks, married and have eight lovely children. It is good to have you back. Issei. Issei gave a smile and responded, yeah. For me it was 35 years since I saw any of you. Regardless, you never even tried to invite any of us to meet them. That is not very nice, Ice. Venelana spoke with fake sadness, as Issei tried to explain, even my parents were like that for the first day, the only reason that I even encountered any of you was by Serzich's and Shiva's luck, otherwise I wouldn't even be here to begin with. I guess. Issei spoke, as Venelana rubbed Rosemary's hair who was sitting on her lap, as she speaks. Lady Gremory. Venelana cuts her off as she speaks. Please, just call me grandmother. I see Issei as my son, so it would be nice if you would. Why yes, Grandma, would you like to tell more about this op I dragon show? Juniper and some of the Ark sisters were chuckling, they remembered Drag hated that name. As for Drag, he only grumbled with annoyance, Arcadia helped him a lot with his trauma to that. He was annoyed by the fact that some if not all of the Ark children, wanted to hear the infamous song. But he relented, accepting the fact. Oh there is a lot my dear, come with me, I will show you everything. Venelana's words were nodded by Rosemary as the duo got up from their seats, she looked towards the other Ark siblings and asked, does anyone else want to come with me? I would. Aqua spoke, as she was followed by Saffron, Jade and Violet, as Venelana took them to the location. Drake could only grumble at this, as Issei gave a sweat drop, the last thing he expected was his kids to actually like Apai Dragon. Once Venelana and the kids left, Issei asked. Anyways. I wanted to ask. Hope you don't mind answering me this. Issei asked as Zyasada spoke, sure, I don't mind. What happened after my demise? Issei spoke with a serious yet sad tone, he couldn't imagine what the Gremory family would have gone through in the aftermath of what the Gremory family had done. Zyasada seemed nervous, he knew the shitstorm that his family had to deal with, due to what Rias did. Opening start. The screen shows the system as it starts to load the stats. It changes to a man, surrounded by multiple enemies. It shows Issei preparing for battle, where it soon follows with the others. Juniper, Willow, and a purple-haired woman along with her family, are looking at the scene. The scene changes to a smiling white-haired man, and a blue-haired woman. The scene changes to a tomb where a white-haired man is giving a side glare, as a skeleton man is walking towards him. Soon three beings show up with sinister smiles. The Ark family, Ark siblings, and the Arcadian army is shown. The scene changes to Issei facing off against a black-haired woman, with a lavender-haired woman in chains. The television screen is shown where Issei is facing against Rias, the latter having hate-filled eyes in her. Juniper is seen fighting off against Akeno, as the former has a smile, while the latter has a glare. The rest of the Arcadian arcs, along with Yudo, Jinshiro, Gaspar and Mary all assist them. Mary has a water serpent surrounding her. The scene changes to the skeleton god making an alliance with the white-haired man, and their subordinates all working together. The swords is shown which is wielded by Issei. The scene changes to Issei and his allies all looking at the sunset, as he turns around and gives a smile at the camera. Opening ends. Oh dear, where do I even begin? Zeocida spoke sadly as he continued, ever since your death, we immediately had to cancel the op -I Dragon show. That was the first thing that happened. Issei, Juniper and the Ark siblings that were present were surprised at first, however it was one of the consequences, as Zeocitus continued, then, we had to deal with the massive backlash, people were throwing rocks at Rias and her peerage due to her actions, along with several other things, namely garbage. They cursed Rias and her peerage for their involvement in driving their hero away. Like a good father does, I tried to help in the situation, even Venelana was helping with it, despite not liking what Rias did. But it was off no use, people still hated Rias and her peerage. The Arcs noted this as Juniper mused, that is meant to happen. She must not have thought of the consequences, right? Indeed Juniper, she did not. She only cared for herself, now that Ice had fulfilled her dreams of being the rating game champion, and gained more glory, she thought it'd be fit for her to discard him. Adorned with a newfound glory, she presumed that if she had broken herself off from Issei, she would suffer no consequences, after all, in her eyes, who would care for a lowly pervert like him? Zeocida spoke with agreement, as the Ark children were livid at what Rias had done, as Bianca soon asked. What happened after that grandfather? 
Zeocidus looked at Bianca and spoke. After that Bianca, she entered into Issei's room, knowing full well that she is not welcome in Issei's house after what she did. She and her girls claimed that they still loved Issei, and I take it you know what your aunt did to those girls, right? Yeah. They had it coming after what they did to dad. Bianca spoke coldly as Issei gave a glance of worry, the children clearly had inherited their mother's sadistic nature, as Juniper gave a side elbow to Bianca, knowing that this may hurt Zeocidus and Benalana. Bianca realized this and also became concerned on what they would say. I understand your anger Bianca, even we were angry at this. None of us were happy at what the girls did. They had the gall to enter your father's room, especially after his presumed death, so we were also angry. In the aftermath, none of the girls even dared to enter your room, after this, in fact they didn't even try to enter your place. Zeocidus explained as the she nodded in understanding, as Olivia asked. After that did she try anything against dad's family or anyone else? Zeocidus shook his head and responded. None whatsoever, Serzich has made sure that she does not get any funny business. She was the most hated face for the past one year, due to what she had done. She did not dare come to the human world aside from her college after that. Zeocidus spoke as Olivia understood this and gave a nod. He gave a glance to Milikas who wanted to speak something, as Zeocidus spoke, oh I actually forgot, Milikas wanted to speak something to you, Issei. Oh. Issei turns around to see Milikas fidgeting nervously making the boy surprised as he spoke, is something the matter, Milikas? You um, Issei nai san. I I want to. The others look towards Milikas making him even more nervous as Juniper added, tell us Milikas, is something wrong? Empress. I wish Juniper cuts him off as she speaks with a smile, call me Juniper Ain, just like you call Issei, your big brother, treat me as a big sister in private, okay? Why yes. Anyways I want to see Arcadia in person. Many were surprised by this request, not because of how big it was, but the contrary, the request was so small that it could be easily fulfilled. That's it consider it done, Milikas. We were going on a tour anyway, since you are not the only one that wanted it. Kunu and several others wanted it as well. Juniper spoke with a smile as Milikas beamed in response, he was happy that he could visit Arcadia, a world that his older brother figure cherished so much. We will all be going together, so be present till then, okay? Milikas nodded in agreement, as Grafia gave a glance to Issei, who nodded, as he mentally spoke that Milikas would be alright. Scene change. Time skip brought to you by Chibi Issei vibing tonight dancer. Bremery Mansion, 12.30pm. The visitors had gathered in the Gremory Mansion to head towards Arcadia, as even the girls that went with Venelana were having huge bags that consisted of op eye dragon merch, they loved all of it, as Drake could be heard crying internally. He wished that Arcadia won't revive the cursed legacy of op eye dragon here. The guests comprised of Jinshiro Saji, Yudo Kiba, Gaspar Vladi, Mary Haidu, Kunu and finally Milikas Gremory. Okay Milikas, I want you to be at your best behavior when you visit Arcadia, alright? Grafia asked with a serious tone, as Serzich is added. Issei, Juniper, he is under your care, make sure he is with you at all time. Issei nodded, as Milikas assured his parents, don't worry mother, father, I will be at my best behavior. And will stay with Issei Nai and Juniper Aini at all times. But Milikas. Issei looked at his wife, who nodded as she was about to open the portal, as she did so. She spoke, come everyone, let's all go. The others nodded, but just as they were about to enter. Someone came in. Where are you all going? The one who spoke was Ria's, as many groaned in response, Juniper then spoke, where we go, that is none of your business, Ria's. Let's go, we are wasting our time here. Juniper spoke coldly, the woman completely ruined the mood that they had, the jolly mood that they had. Ria's wanted to retort only for Issei and Serzich's to stop her. Issei closed the gap between her, his appearance glancing over her which made the Gremory girl terrified of the monster that was her pawn. He spoke coldly to her. You heard my wife, don't even bother to convince any of us to take you to where we are going, your spoiled nature has not changed even now, so don't even bother asking me anything, Ria's Gremory. Ria's gritted her teeth in fury, there was a time when Issei listened to her without question, but now, he is no longer listening to her in any way. However, she was terrified of the aura Issei generated. I want to know where you are going. Serzich's only face palmed at this, as Issei only narrowed his gaze and spoke, if you want to behave like a child, then I shall treat you as such. Issei grabbed her by the cloth and spoke with a serious tone, time for some discipline. Issei kept slapping her constantly as she felt the blow of every slap, he did held back his strength, so as to not cause any permanent damage, but he made sure it hurt. It hurt her a lot. The slap still managed to deal some level of permanent damage, which made Issei stunned on how weak Rias has become, or maybe he just became too strong, either way Rias was getting blow after blow as Rias fell to the ground, her face was completely swollen. 
Seriously, just do everyone a favor and change yourself, stop being the spoiled entitled brat that you are and make yourself better. Issei walked away as Serzich spoke, Issei is right, I am teleporting you to your room and putting a seal on it, whenever you leave this room I will come to know. Rias wanted to retort, but Serzich's was having none of it and immediately teleported her to the room. He looked to Issei and spoke, I was not expecting her to break the seal. I should have made a stronger one beforehand. Let's just head in and start with the tour. The others nodded in agreement as the visitors all headed inside for their tour of Arcadia. Scene change. Arcadia, 1 p.m. The group that was traveling to Arcadia from the portal as many marveled at the city that was Arcadia. Juniper then spoke with a smile, everyone, welcome to Arcadia. So this is Arcadia, the place that Issei is now currently the emperor of. Kiba asked as Issei responded, you got that one right, I am its current emperor, but when the time comes, I will pass on the throne to my successor. Juniper nodded in agreement as Gaspar asked, then what? What will the two of you do? For me, I will be the general of the army, just one rank lower than the supreme general, and fight in wars relating to other planets and trust me, there is a whole lot of mess out there, Gaspar. I will be helping my successor in any way he wants. Juniper then added. I will be guiding my successor, along with my husband, we both will be part of the Ark Council. Issei also has his duties as the general of the army, training any and all future cadets. The words were agreed as Milikas asked, Issei Nai, would you train me in your army as well? Me too, even I want to train as well. Kunu added, as the Ark children gulped a lump of bile knowing how harsh Issei's training was known to be, they wondered on what their father's choice would be, as Issei spoke. Sure, why not? I will train you too. All the Ark children shuddered at this, they knew that these two will be powerful, but not without some intense training. That would make them think twice on continuing this training. Juniper almost gave a wry smile, knowing on how completely unaware the trap the two kids are going into, as he spoke. Well, let's head down and show you kids around. The others nodded in agreement as Juniper started to explain. Arcadia is a large empire comprised of many different continents, 15 to be exact, whose lands reach up to 50 billion kilometers at best, compared to the Four Kingdoms which is around 100,000 kilometers at best. Each continent is governed by different nations. With the main nation, the Arcadians, taking most of the land, around eight continents. The main eight continents are governed by the Arcs, they essentially rule and guide the nation in its duties with numerous other royal families, assuring them, those families also have a high power that is equal to the Arcs. Issei nodded in agreement as he continued. Yes, there are the families in Kugain, Kingdom of Knights and Egyptian Kingdom to name a few, not to be confused with the Egyptian pantheon. The others nodded in agreement as they walked ahead, Issei then explained, there are other kingdoms such as the Grim, Undead, Dragon, Fairy, Elves, Dwarves, Middle-earth are their own selected nation, and govern numerous lands in Arcadia. I see. So it is basically a sort of like our own faction leaders, correct? Issei nodded in agreement, yes, Saji, you are right on that one. Anyways, most heirs are chosen by many royal families looking after their chosen target and teaching, as well as observing them to make sure they are up to the task of being a part of Arcadia, both I and Juniper were taught as such to become good and perfect heirs. Juniper nodded in agreement as she had spoken in response. I wouldn't say perfect, just good enough, and we have been ruling Arcadia for the past 30 years, and soon enough, we will pass on the throne to a worthy successor, one of our children is going to take up the throne. The others nodded in understanding, as Kiba asked, so who is that successor? Well it is John, he is going to be the emperor next. And mostly once we are done with our time. Juniper spoke in agreement, yep, and I am going to pass on the throne to our son when we feel like the time is right. Mom and dad are right, they have been raising me to become a righteous emperor, and I will fulfill my parents' legacy. Mary nodded, she could see her little brother in her nephew. Many understood that John would be filling some very big shoes once his parents stepped down from their positions. Guys, let's get moving, we have a lot to show you. Issei spoke as he pointed to the different locations, as the girls introduced the academies to the guests who were all interested to see and join some of these academies, even Mary herself wanted to join academia, which was where her brother, sister-in-law and nephew all went to. They eventually reached the Ark Mansion, where they all saw on how huge the mansion is, it was on par with the Gremory Mansion, if not bigger than that. So this is where you all stayed. Mary asked with amazement as Aqua spoke, you are right on that one, Aunt Mary. In fact, the mansion is so big that we all easily fit all of the 1-5 into the mansion. Bianca added as John nodded in agreement, as Rosemary spoke, we will all keep our stuff from the Opai Dragon in our rooms. See you later. Bianca, Aqua, Saffron and Violet all headed to their rooms, as Dragon used. Those girls, I hope that Arcadia does not plan to make a new show of Opai Dragon. 
The smirk grew on Juniper's face as she spoke, well Drake, I would love to have the elders know about the show, we don't mind bringing it back. Oh fuck off. Don't you dare Juniper Juniper only gave a grin to Drag and responded, you got that one, right, I will and there is nothing you can do to stop me. Whatever you say, battle maniac, you couldn't even get past Willow or Assay. You third place arc. Juniper growled as a tick mark grew on her head, Juniper's anger made Kiba, Milikas, Kunu, Jinshiro and Gasper, along with the arc children nervously back away. She hated being called that. The Empress then spoke coldly. Shut it. Virgin Dragon. Juniper's words made Drag start to cry loudly as he responded. Not cool, Juniper. You keep teasing me on my single status, this is not fair, Drag's words only made Juniper annoyed as she shouted. Then get your act together and confess to that dragon girl that clearly likes you. If you don't want me to tease you then get your ass to the dragon kingdom and ask her out, Drag relented as he spoke with a somber tone. Why yes ma'am. Many sweat dropped at the interaction including a say, Asim wondered who is this dragon that likes Drag, and wondered what just happened. Scene change. Brown of Heroes, Arcadia, 3.30 pm. Mary was looking at what seems to be an image depicting the icons, it depicted several beings that had different features, some human-like and some animalistic. What are these? Mary was suddenly stopped as Issei and Juniper looked to see the others heading outside the room. They noticed Mary not being present, making the couple wonder what Mary was doing back in there. Mary looked at one of them and spoke, why do I have a connection to one of them? Mary spoke, almost in a daze as she suddenly started to become dazed. Both Issei and Juniper watched this and rushed to her side as they shouted, Mary Mary me. The sister was able to snap out of her daze and speak. Issei. Juniper. We saw you in a daze. Why were you looking at this? Issei asked while looking at the icons, as Mary spoke. I don't know. But all I know is that. I feel connected. I just don't know why, but Mary fell back while holding her head, her eyes started to lose her vision. Mary. Issei asked as she soon fell unconscious, Juniper became worried, it was just like how Issei fell unconscious when he was tested for the Knights of the Round. Issei became worried as he shouted, Mary. Issei shook Mary and checked for her pulse, happy that she was alive. Juniper then spoke. Issei, I think this is just like the time when you gained the Knights of the Round, remember? Issei became wide-eyed, this meant that an icon has noticed her and wished to test her to see if she was worthy. But all of the icons are with our kids or with you and me, except for... Issei widened his eyes as he spoke with a tone of surprise, Leviathan. The icon of water, Mercury never got them. This means, will my sister-in-law receive them? Juniper asked with surprise, as Issei spoke, I guess. But what past will she confront? We can only ask her once she wakes up, unless we intrude into her mind. Issei spoke uncertain whether he should do it. Juniper then spoke while keeping her hand on Issei, we should head inside, I fear that she may not wake up until the Leviathan defeats her. No. I think we should have faith. If my sister is anything like me, she will wake up from this trial. But if she does not, we will enter her mind. And help her. Juniper nodded in understanding as they watched wondering when Mary would wake up. Scene change. Mary's mindscape, 4 pm. Mary looked around seeing herself in a familiar location, this was a graveyard, she turned around and became wide-eyed, as tears fell from her eyes dripping onto the ground. This was the gravestone of her own brother, Issei Haidu. Issei. Mary spoke with a weak tone as she fell to the ground crying. She begged for his forgiveness for being a terrible older sister and not protecting him when he needed her the most as suddenly a noise suddenly spoke. Mary Nee. The voice made Mary stop her crying as he expression changed to that of a fear, knowing that it was the voice of her deceased brother as he spoke, why did you leave me to die? I say, P please. I I wasn't a G good sister. Please F forgive me. Isaiah's voice boomed into the field as he shouted with fury, you lie. You are a terrible sister now suffer the consequences. Mary paled at this, as suddenly a huge dragon rose from Issei's grave, Mary recognized him to be Drag, but Drag looked different, he looked like a corpse come to life, akin to that of a zombie. His eyeballs were completely hollow having no life, his wings were torn, and there seems to be moss growing on his body. His outside bones were extruding from his body. This was a zombie version of Drag, or zombie Drag. Mary looked at the dragon with utter fear, this was the same being that used to kill her in every single one of her nightmare. Issei. Then commanded. Fill her. Drake grabbed the helpless Mary, and she looked at zombie Drake with pure fear, as she spoke, P please Drake. F forgive me for being a T terrible sister. Quiet, Mary. Not only did you see your brother die so gruesomely, but even I died because of your failure. The zombified Drake was ready to incinerate her when the dragon spoke. Honestly it is pathetic your brother. 
someone that was so loved by everyone, it must be so darning to fail him. Don't you marry Mary was glaring at the dragon, as zombie Drake continued while glancing towards the tombstone. My host, my poor host. Perverted yet kind, his only flaw. He was manipulated by people like Rias and her peerage, by that full and whore Rainer. Even you went to America to study, remember. Mary had tears in her eyes, remembering on how she left for America to complete her studies, as zombie Drake spoke mockingly, despite you abandoning him, he still did not blame you, he never hated you. Yet, when he needed you the most, he died, and with that, you abandoned the only one that would have truly cared for you. You must be such a good big sister, haven't you? Mary gritted her teeth in helplessness, she blamed herself due to what happened to her brother, however, just as she was about to accept defeat, a voice boomed inside of her head. Don't listen to him, Mary. Do you blame yourself for your brother's demise? What would he truly want from you? What would he truly want you to be? Out of all the people, you knew what kind of a person your brother is, right? Mary widened her eyes, the voice was right. Her brother wouldn't want to be sad, sure he was angry that she was leaving him, but later he understood and was happy with her studying for her future. She was one of the most smartest women he had ever known, she was a child prodigy, hence why she left for America when Issei was a child. She did return when Asia and Rias had settled in their home. He would want her to be happy, he would want her to live a normal life, her brother may be perverted, but he is the most kindest soul that she ever knew. The dragon was lying, he never did blame her for failing him in any way. She was there whenever he needed her, especially after the girls broke up with him without any mercy. She even trashed those heathens for daring to desecrate his room with their presence. Worst, the last thing he wants is to see her suffer. Breeding her teeth in anger, this drag was insulting the grave side her brother was in, she was not going to falter to this abomination in any way. Glowing in a combination of a silver and blue, she declared. Balance breaker. Transcendental arrival. Mary was now clad in the same armor that she wore against Trahixa, as zombie Drag looked in surprise, as he responded. Seems like you plan to humiliate him even more. You really are a Mary cuts him off by shouting, shut up. You know nothing about my brother, you are just an abomination, and you will never be the real Drag. My brother would always put others first, and will never be as cold as this abomination. You are nothing but a part of my mind. Mary raised her hand, a product of her two sacred gears allowed her to create any world that she desired, the first time she did this was when she was able to hold off Trahixa for a short amount of time, she has been training ever since, and has become much more stronger than before. Zombie Drake tried to use the flames, but thanks to the armor's property, it was unable to do anything, as the flames kept missing its target as Mary decided to end this in a proper manner. You are not even the real drag, the real drag's flames are supposed to be hotter than this, way hotter than this. You are nothing but a fake, a false being. Mary spoke while operating Innovate Clear's terminal in his left gauntlet, he can form a blade-like light as she spoke coldly. You are an imitator and a poor one at that. Mary sliced zombie Drag in half, killing him instantly as he was consumed by the light, Mary then looked at the grave, as she looked at her brother's tombstone and spoke, it's over. The scenery suddenly changed to a submerged city location, as Mary was able to breathe much to her surprise, she dropped her armor and reverted back to normal. She walked inside or swam inside, only to find the place to be like regular land, there was no water in this place, as she continued to walk ahead. She was suddenly met up by a huge blue serpentine being that had two wings. The beast roared at Mary, making her flinch, she had her two sacred gears, ready to fight against him. W who are you? Mary asked with fear in her tone, she was amazed seeing the beast, but was worried knowing what it will do to her. Please, don't be afraid. I was the one that talked to you in your head, Mary Haidu. The beast's voice boomed as Mary spoke recollecting the voice as she spoke, so it was you. Indeed, and I know everything, on how you had blamed yourself for the Emperor's demise, but it is not your fault. He survived and he does not blame you either. Right. Mary nodded, Issei never did blame her in any way for almost dying, she was eternally grateful to Juniper for saving her brother's life. She looked at the beast who announced. This was nothing short of a test, Mary. Mary was surprised as she spoke, a test. Yes Mary, you had to fight against your past demons, the same demons that was haunting you for years, and you passed it, with all your might. Mary nodded as she couldn't help but crack a small smile, she feared the zombie version of Drake for so long, but not anymore. She will no longer fear him anymore. Although, before I leave, I wish to know. What would you do, since you will shortly gain my power and learn my abilities? I want to know, what are your true intentions? Mary thought for a moment and spoke. My little brother told me about icons, godlike beings that can easily take out civilizations, including in some cases planets. This power I receive I won't use it till I deem it absolutely necessary, I will only use it when I have no other choice. Leviathan looked at Mary and asked, is it because of fear you don't wish to use the power? 
Not at all, I see the power to be too strong, my sacred gears were already powerful, and that alone made me a target. I remember being hunted down for possessing too long Inus, causing me to learn on how to deal with those that wanted my power for their own selfish gain, and so far, I have only used my power to protect and defend myself and those I care about. That is why I won't use the Leviathan's power until I see fit, until I know that this power is the only way I can defeat my enemies and save those I deem family and friends. Leviathan nodded as he roared in happiness, she passed the second and final trial as the beast spoke. You did well Mary, you did amazing, the power of the Leviathan is yours to use. Use it well, Mary Haidu. The Leviathan went inside of her as she was suddenly caught off guard. She looked at her body and suddenly the vision went white and everything went to normal. Scene change. Arcadian Med Bay, 6 p.m. Mary woke up from her nightmare as she looked up to see herself in the medical bay as Issei rushed to her and embraced her. It's okay, Ice. I am fine. Issei looked up and nodded, Juniper walked towards her and spoke with worry, honestly, when you passed out we feared the worst, only to find out that the Leviathan was taking a trail of you. Issei soon split up and looked to Jade who was looking at the scans, as she spoke. Seems like, you have Leviathan's signature, which means you are the icon of water. Jade spoke with a smile, as Issei spoke, congratulations, marry me. Thanks, I guess. Mary spoke while bringing out a water snake around her body as she spoke, what does this icon of water even mean? I will explain, so basically the icons are huge beings compassed of magic that share some similarities in that they are massive in size, towering over humans and faunus alike. The icons' bodies are compassed of either, and can heal their bodies when damaged by absorbing more either from the environment, even being able to regenerate lost limbs in a matter of seconds. They have been known to transform into even more powerful forms by absorbing massive amounts of concentrated ether, such as from the heart of a mother crystal. Like what was said, an icon embodies one of the eight elements of the realm. Fire, ice, lightning, earth, light, darkness, water, wind or the formerly lost one steel. Issei explained as Juniper spoke. There are multiple icons of the same element, like there are two types of icons of fire, like Phoenix and Urfit for instance. Usually only members of the Ark family or those that have Ark blood have it, but you are the second person to become worthy of an icon, not having the blood of an Ark. Juniper spoke with a smile, as Mary asked with confusion. Then, who was the first? Mary asked as Juniper glanced at Issei and spoke with a smile, your brother was the first, it is an irony that both of the Haidu siblings are worthy of the icons. Is this true? Mary turned around to see Issei's arm change to that of a metal plating as she spoke, Ice, is that true? Yep, I managed to earn mine during a trial of my own, it's a long story. Mary then spoke in response, so that means you gained the power of the lost icon of steel. You were right on that one, I was there when he gained that power. Juniper spoke remembering the trial that she was in, when Issei was made to gain the power of Icon of Steel. Issei then spoke, I had to confront my own past, relating to a certain exes of mine, but in the end, I conquered my own fear, and well, I became worthy. Even got my own ship Ragnarok. Issei added as Mary nodded and spoke I see. So what icon are you, Jade? Jade looked at her and spoke, I am Shiva, the Icon of Ice. Jade generated some ice to show as Mary nodded in understanding as Issei explained, each icon has its own ability and powers, exclusive to its element, you will find yours once you train your powers. Anyways you should rest for a while. I will be looking after the rest. Okay. Mary nodded in understanding as Issei spoke, call me if you need me, I have already informed mom and dad that we will be staying here for the day, so they wouldn't be worried. Very well, Issei. Mary spoke with a smile, as Issei, Juniper and Jade left, as they said bye to Mary as they left the room. Mary looked at the water snake, wondering what is going to happen next. She was now the icon of water, and knew that the black arms will want her power. She clenched her fists in anger, there was no way she will let the power be taken away from her. She vowed to protect the Leviathan at all costs. Scene change. Issei was in his personal room, as he looked at the Arcadian city that was cherished by him and his family as he gave a sigh, he was worried on what may come in the future. Is something wrong? Someone spoke while wrapping her arms around Issei as she gave a smile, Issei turned around to see Juniper as he kept his hand on her, he then spoke. Nothing much. Just surprised that all of the icons have found their rightful owners. Which makes me wonder are there more like the Knights of the Round out there? Juniper shook her head and responded, no, I doubt there is. Truth be told, many of us were still under the non-belief that Knights of the Round existed, since it was no way that any of us even located or found it. The only evidence of it existing was Richard's journal, and the proof that you ended up being worthy of it. Was an experience I would never forget. Regardless, I don't think other icons are there. Issei nodded in agreement as he checked the system. Juniper looked at Issei as she looked at the system. 
She saw it by sheer coincidence, as Issei tried his best of badly lying to her, as she saw through his lies and Issei had to relent and accept it, and Juniper understood, and as time passed by, some of her kids inherited it as well. An emission or request. Issei shook his head and spoke, none, none so far. You or the kids will get a mission. Juniper spoke as Issei dispelled the system's interface as she continued. Still, let's rest for the day, the others have already headed back to their home worlds and are preparing for the Azazel Cup. Issei nodded as the couple went inside to rest for the night, knowing that the Azazel Cup is going to be something big. Two days later. Hi do residents, 9.30 am. Issei was in his room, reading some documents about the recent Black Arms activity that had happened in the underworld. He knew that they were exporting some very dangerous material back to Black Arms and the Alliance of Hell. It was the special material that Carmilla had designed which would later come to use later on. He asked Galath about this, and he confirmed that they are synthesizing kips. How did Carmilla came to know about the kips? You can thank Nicholas for that. The reason was that just recently, they were able to perform a successful raid on the Black Arms forces, thanks to coordination from the Lucifer Peerage, who was more than happy to assist them in every way. They managed to gain access to the materials that have kips. Issei gave a sigh knowing how much of the pain Carmilla was even in the early days. Well Drag, what do you think? Issei asked Drag as he pondered on how things are. I'd say that orange-haired bitch is going to be even more problematic to you guys, especially to Juniper and Willow. Issei nodded, he knew how much of the pain she was. In fact, all members of the Big Four despise her. But Willow and Juniper hate her the most, due to her experimentation on Willow, as well as the events of the Ark Civil War, to name a few. The mere mention of her name gets them really angry. But even Issei has anger and hatred towards the woman, for an event that she had done to him. Figures, that woman just cares about science, killing entire cities if it achieves her goals. Issei gives a sigh as he continues, we have to deal with her, at this point, maybe I should put the order to kill on sight. Arcadians would be happy with her just being dead. Her being alive will only cause her problems. Issei continued as Dreg spoke. You should talk this to your wife, and then make the decision, it would be wise. But I agree, she is better off dead than alive. Dreg spoke his own words of wisdom as Issei spoke, I agree. A knock was heard on the door, as Issei asked, who is it? Dad, it's me, are you free right now? Issei kept the reports down, as he spoke, yes, I am Rosemary, you can come inside. The door soon opened up revealing Rosemary and Mary, as Issei asked, Mary Nee, you are here too. Yes Ice. We were planning on going on some shopping, me and some of the kids. Hope you are alright with it. Issei shook his head and spoke, why wouldn't I be? If anything I am alright with it. Anyways, did you ask Juniper about it? Yep, mom is alright with it. Rosemary spoke with a cheerful tone. Issei then nodded and spoke, alright then, you kids have fun, okay? Yes. Thanks dad. Issei nodded, as Rosemary and Mary soon left the room. Issei watched his daughter and older sister leave. He knew that they are going to have some fun, as he continued to think on what needs to be done next. Issei and Juniper were together, as they were discussing on their team plans. Juniper looked over to this and spoke, so we will be facing literal gods and ultimate class devils. That is really something. Yep, and from what I can recollect, even John is bringing his A-game, so we will be ready for him. Juniper looked at him as she asked, Hey Ice, can you tell me his team? Nope, I made a promise to keep it a secret, and besides you will be seeing them tonight. Juniper pouted in response as she spoke, No fair. I want to know too. Sorry, no can do. It would take away the surprise from it, and besides, even he doesn't know that all members of the Big Four are fighting in this tournament. So it is fair that even you guys are in the dark about what is in his team. Juniper sighed as she spoke, Fine, I just hope he makes a good team. He does, Juniper, our boy knows what he is doing. Juniper looked at him and nodded. She then spoke, anyways, your parents will also be watching, right? Yep, and I am worried, the black arms, they may go after my parents. They could even harm them just to weaken me, they know that I am their biggest threat to their plans. Juniper could understand Issei's worry and fear. Her in-laws while they were amazing people, were vulnerable to the black arms, and God forbid if Nicholas was the one that even tried to harm them. She liked her in-laws seeing them as her own parents, and she would rip anyone to shreds that even dares to try and harm her parents. She kept her hand on her husband and spoke, you don't have to worry, there are Arcadian royal guards that will protect those two from any and all that may harm them. But it is those grim reapers under Hades, I am concerned about. Juniper spoke with her own worried tone, as Issei growled. Yeah, Hades will be a corpse if he even thinks about harming my parents. I don't care if Zeus has a problem, even he knows that I won't forgive those that would harm my loved ones. Issei clenched his fists in anger, as Juniper hugs him to calm him down. She knew who he was talking about. 
She remembered him informing her about Rizavam Livan Lucifer, Vali's grandfather. The man abused Vali to the point of him running away and gathering power, so that one day he could beat him. She also remembered on how he and Diehauser Belial had captured his parents and exposed his true nature in front of his own parents, who were clueless about the supernatural. Instead of abandoning him they accepted him, remembering his habit of constantly apologizing which was still present when he apologized to his parents for not inviting them to their wedding and even when the kids were born. This gave him the strength to beat Rizavam for good, however that didn't stop his master plan which involved unleashing Trahiksa onto the supernatural, accompanied by two evil dragons Apophis and Azidaka. They managed to defeat them, but at the cost of Issei being transported here, where he met up with Juniper, and well, the rest is history. It's alright, nothing will happen to your parents. They are the most kindest people that I have ever met, and I would be damned if anything happened to them. Regardless, you can be assured that they will be fine. Juniper spoke with an assured tone and a smile, as Issei could only nod. He soon returned back to his normal state, as they split up. Juniper then asks. Speaking of which, I wonder are you planning to use Ragnarok for our transport or are you going to use Ryudamaru? Issei thought for a moment, it's been a while since he has used his familiar or even met him. He usually hangs out in the military base of the Issei's own 501st Legion. The ship initially was in its toy boat form, but when Issei reached level 1000, its familiar reacted to that power and became a huge ship that almost looked akin to a star destroyer adorned with a dragon design. For now, I will stick to Ragnarok, but if I can, I will bring Ryudamaru for this. It has been long since he has seen the light of the day. We should probably continue planning on what we must do next, we still have some more planning left. Juniper nodded in agreement as she spoke. Yep, we should probably focus on that. Scene change. In Arcadia, Remnant. 1-5 meeting room, Arcadian HQ, 9.30 pm. John was present amongst his 1-5, as they were discussing on their own plans for the Azazel Cup. They decided to name their team, as Team 1-5, not only as a remembrance to what they had lost years ago, thanks to the decision of a foolish Rose, but also this was what their battalion was originally known to be. Anyways, John, you know what are we up against. We made up our team, but we really don't know just how powerful the combatants in the Azazel Cup are. The one who spoke was Lily Ironblooded, she remembered on how she was the only one who did not fight for the Queen Peace, unlike the others in the battalion, and accepted settling for being the Rook, she was described to be a white-haired woman with short hair and yellow eyes, she wore traditional military armor. Yep, one thing is that they are not huntsmen, and they are far more powerful than any military opponent that we had to deal with. They are from Dad's old world, and they are beings comprised of devils, angels, fallen angels, gods to name a few. The team became surprised as they knew of Issei, but his entire world, it was like dealing with an alternate version of Arcadia, but on a much smaller and different scale. John then added. Not to mention, even Dad is going to fight in the tournament. The 1-5 became shocked as Kafka spoke, who was described to be a very beautiful and charming a young woman with red wine-colored hair that she ties in a messy ponytail, with two loose bangs hanging on either side of her face. Her eyes are of a similar, lighter color, and she wears dark pince-nez sunglasses on top of her head, along with a pearl earring in her right ear. She wears a white dress shirt that exposes the top of her back and shoulders, along with a black jacket that is draped over her shoulders. There's a silver butterfly pin on its left lapel, and on the back there is a large, spider-like pattern in the center, along with webs on both shoulders and a burgundy inside. There are also wine-colored straps with golden accents on both her jacket and thighs, and gloves of a similar shade. She wears black, high-waisted shorts and nylon tights, with a thigh garter on her right leg. She also wears black boots with two different lengths. The right goes over her knee, while the left goes slightly over her ankle. You're kidding, the Emperor is in the fight as well. Kafka asked with pure surprise, as John spoke, yes Kafka, not only is the Emperor fighting but his team as well. So what is his team like? Murata asked to which John shook his head and spoke, I honestly have no clue, he wants it to be a surprise for tonight. The S-rank Valkyrie nodded, as John presumed. I think Uncle Invictus will be Dad's choice in choosing his players. John mused as he continued, and I have a gut feeling that he would be the rook piece of Dad. Yoji Atami then added, who was described to be a slender tall man with short messy black hair and brown eyes. So we will be up against His Highness and one of the strongest Grim. I just hope he does not use that mech suit against us, we would be done for. Yoji spoke with fear, as Lily added. You are forgetting that his mechanical suit called Oxa can easily take up the whole stadium, and Uncle Issei won't use it unless he deems it absolutely necessary, it is his second strongest form and can wipe out entire planets. Lily responded as Yoji nodded when he saw the suit during his fight against the Federation, which annihilated the Odin satellite with relative ease. 
This alone made Issei one of the most dreaded enemies the Black Arms had to face, along with being one of the strongest Arcadian allies. Yep, the Emperor far eclipses all of us in terms of strength alone, and I wonder who else is going to fight in the Emperor's team. Violet spoke with confusion, Issei's strength was strong enough to handle most of the 1-5 alone. After all, he trained some of the members to reach the levels they are, John and Lily being one of them, and some more members from different battalions. He personally trained his entire 501st Legion as well, making sure they are one of the strongest Arcadian Legions in all of Arcadia. That is what scares me, and Dad is not going to tell a word, and in return he promised not to tell about our team composition to his own team. We will all come to know in the opening of the Azazel Cup. John spoke, as Ferlin responded, who was described to be a young man with light grey eyes and ash blonde hair. His hair was short with shaggy layers and bangs which hung over his forehead, between his eyes. It's tonight. John nodded as he responded, yes, Ferlin it is tonight, we need to show ourselves and become ready. This will be the strongest fight we have ever been in, or tournament, and eventually we will fight my dad's own team as well. I guess you are right on that one. The one who spoke was Kevin Kozlana, who was described to be a tall man with fair skin and a stern expression. His eyes are blue like aquamarine gems, and his hair is as white as snow. Kevin wears a long black coat over his white turtleneck, with black pants and boots. There are splashes of blue here and there on his outfit. But even then, will we fight against the Gremory team? The one who asked was Vladilina Milais, shortened for Lena. She was a woman with silver eyes and hair. She is 160 centimeters tall, although she appears taller due to her heels. One of her more distinguishing features is her double ahog. She is known to wear a formal military uniform due to her family's reputation in the military. Most likely yes, and if she does fight me or dad, I am certainly going to teach her and her peerage of sluts what we are capable of. John spoke coldly and with utter disdain, he hated Rias for what she had done to her father, and also for being utterly devoid of any remorse or guilt. Scarlet then asked. From what you told, she was the one that betrayed the Emperor, right? John nodded as he spoke, yep, you got that one right, to put it in perspective, she only put a charade of being nice and an older sister figure, but in reality, she has some parallels to your old self Scarlet. Ugh, don't remind me, I was a bitch back then. Scarlet spoke with an annoyed as Violet retorted, you still are. What was that? Scarlet exclaimed as Murata spoke, Scarlet, Violet enough. They both gave a glare towards each other, as John only gave a sigh. Even now these two just didn't get along, at all. Someone then spoke garnering his attention. This was Tallulah, who was described to be a pale-skinned tall woman with short grey hair and what appears to be spiky horns on her head, she has grey eyes and is often seen to be dressed in a formal military attire like Lena. John, you can count on us, we will fight and win the Azazel Cup at all costs. John nodded as he spoke. I know, even if my opponent is against my dad and his team. We will try our best and win, everyone, let's show the factions the power of 1-5. John declared with a grin, as the rest of the 1-5 cheer in response, they were ready for the Azazel Cup. Scene change. Time skip brought to you by Chibi Issei getting sucked into a multicolored portal as Chibi Juniper pulls him back, but struggles to do so, as she watches him helplessly get sucked into the portal. Azazel Cup Grounds, Underworld, 9.30pm. Many had gathered onto the grounds of the Azazel Cup, as they all cheered for the oncoming teams that will be participating in the match. Goru and Mickey were also present, as they were guarded by the Arcadian Royal Guard that were protecting the family. They were seated near their grandchildren as well as Artemis Ark and Galath Ark, who was in his regular clothing, they all watched with intrigue on the competitors. Ajuka and Tiamat were announcing the names, with the latter not being happy that is say, being the Red Dragon Emperor, but she was silent due to him primary being the Emperor of Arcadia, and was stated to be much stronger than before. She wanted him to return his treasure. Little does she know that it is not going to happen, knowing what Drake told him about her. Everyone. Let us begin with the announcement of the teams. The first team is Team Black from the Norse mythology Ajuka announced as he continued, please have a round of applause. The crowd cheered for them, as Surtur came alongside his entire team, which comprised primarily of people from god-class beings from the Norse mythology. The next team is Team Sona Citri, led by their king, Lady Sona Citri. Sona soon came towards the stage alongside her two new team members, Yudo Kiba and Gaspar Vladi, as many cheered for them. The next team is Team Rias Gremory, led by their king, Lady Rias Gremory. As soon as Ajuka announced her name, many started to boo at her and curse her for actions. They did not forget what she did and hated her for that. It was a good thing that Issei did not hold any animosity towards them, else they would have been done done. Rias gritted her teeth in anger, as Sona watched this and shook her head in disappointment. The next team is Team Zatauji, led by the familiar master Zatauji. 
some people started to cheer him, as his team of familiars were also roaring in response, Zataji could only hope that they secure a good position in this cup. The following team is Team Lightning, led by the Fallen Angel Vice Governor General, Baraquil, please have a round of applause. The crowd cheered for Baraquil despite what his daughter had done, although he did not cut ties with Akeno, since she was his only family left. He lost Shuri, and he did not want to lose Akeno. The next team is Team Phoenix, led by their King Ruval Phoenix the crowd once again cheered for them, Rava looked at Rhea's Gremory with sadness, she chose to not participate in this tournament. She felt guilt for her actions, and she was done listening to Rhea's, especially after a stern talking with her mother and sister. The following team that is arriving is Team Journey to the West, led by the Monkey King first generation son Wukong. The crowd especially the Yao Kai cheered for the man as he looked at the scene with happiness, he and his team also joined the opening grounds. The next team to arrive is Team Ashura. Led by the great Asura Prince Mahabali. Please have a round of applause. The crowd while terrified did cheer for the Asura who had a confident look on his face, he was most interested in fighting against Indra, after all he had to pay for being involved in the murder of his father. The next team to arrive is Team Shooting Star. Led by the human magician Shooting Star. The team of magicians soon arrived as many started to murmur on what is going to happen, since they were humans competing against gods or god-like beings or somewhat lower than them. The next team to arrive is Team Black Satan of Darkness Dragon King, led by the high-class Grim Reaper Zeno. The leaders kept their eye on Zeno, including Artemis and Galath, he could be a problem to them, as they are now working with the Black Arms, however there were no records of his criminal activity, but still was under supervision. They had to let him in so that they could find more about their leader. The following team to arrive is Team 1-5 from Arcadia, led by the Arcadian Prince John Arc. Give them a huge round of applause. As soon as the team arrived on their personal toll, the AV-35 Vendetta, which soon landed revealing the team as they all waved their hands towards the guests. The Arcadians and the Hyatus cheered for John the most, alongside his team, they enjoyed the entrance the 1-5 had made. Everyone else also cheered. Rias glared at John for being present, she hated Issei at this point, but was fearful of him for trying anything against him, since this was not the same Issei she knew. The next team is Team Babel Belial, led by the rating game champion, Diehauser Belial. Please a round of applause. Many cheered for him, however some booted him for his past involvement with the Klepeth, as he also revealed the existence of the King Peace as well. The next team is Team Vajra, led by Hindu God Indra. Please, a round of applause. Ajuka exclaimed as many cheered for the Heavenly King, while some like Mahabali were glaring towards Indra with hatred in their eyes. The team after that is Team Imperial Pure, led by the King Sayard Bale. Ajuka announced as Sayard Bale, soon showed up with him looking at the crowd with his smile, he glanced towards John, knowing that he was the son of Issei Haidu, he was going to enjoy having a match with him. Seeing the boy, as he wondered if he would be similar to his father. The crowd cheered for the Lion King, as well. The arriving team is Team Leisure of the Kings, led by the King of Monsters, Tiffin. Tiffin soon arrived, his appearance intimidated many of the contenders as they all watched with awe and respect, seeing the King of Monsters present. The following team is Team Spear of Heavenly Emperor, led by the Cao Cao, the human hero faction leader. Many looked at the hero team in interest, including the 1-5, seeing him as a human in a world full of titans. The 1-5 were intrigued, with John hearing stories on how Cao Cao was one of the few that gave him a tough time while he was in Kyoto. The next team is Team Slash Dog. Led by the Grigori agent and leader of the special ops Team Slash Dog known as Tobio Iqus. Everyone have a round of applause. The crowd cheered for them, knowing what they had done. John looked at Tobio with interest, knowing what his father had told him and what he is capable of. The next are the last two teams, the first is Team White Dragon Emperor of the Morning Star, led by the White Dragon Emperor, Volley Lucifer. Please have a round of applause. The crowd cheered even more for the Lucifer descendant and the White Dragon Emperor, he was quite beloved because of his sudden change, due to Issei's disappearance, however what surprised everyone was that Krom Kruich was with him. And now the team you have been waiting for, the team from Arcadia that will blow your minds. Let me introduce you to Team Red Dragon of Arcadia, led by Issei Haidu, the current Red Dragon Emperor and the Emperor of Arcadia. Please have a round of applause. Everyone cheered for him, especially his family and friends, as Ragnarok soon landed revealing Issei and his team. John and the 1-5 were pale knowing who exactly they are going to face, not only were they going to face the Emperor, but the rest of the Big Four as well. John was shocked to see that even his mother and three aunts are going to fight, which included An, Willow and Mary, all of whom were seen to be waving. He could only hope that he is able to fight against them in their full strength. Rias, on the other hand was foaming seeing Issei, she hated him the most knowing he was the one responsible for making her life go downhill. She vowed to humiliate him during the Azazel Cup. 
Issei and his team were settled as he spoke, I am pretty sure John must have gotten a shock on who his competitors are right now. Yeah, his face was pale as hell, you should have seen the look on the faces of the rest of his team, though, especially upon who they are facing. Willow added her own words, as Juniper retorted, oh shut it you too. Though I wonder which team we will be fighting. Juniper pointed out at the screen, after Issei's team was announced, Dulio's team was announced too. They watched some of the teams looking at the screen, as someone suddenly spoke. Dad. Issei turned around to see John and his team, he was not expecting his father to bring his own entire team, as John spoke, you brought your team to fight against us. Since you decided to bring the original 15 for the Azazel Cup, I also thought to bring my own team for the fight, the team I was in before creating the 500 first, the soldier first class. Issei spoke, as Juniper spoke, so don't expect any of us to go easy on you. Juniper spoke while looking towards the original 15, even you people as well, just because you are friends of my son, doesn't mean I will go easy on you. We will be fighting against you with our full power. That includes me as well. Willow spoke with a smirk, as Mary spoke, I will be seeing you at your full power, my dear nephew. We won't disappoint, we will show you what we are capable of. John spoke as Himeko added, you got that one right, and as his queen, I shall support John. And so will we. Kevin spoke as the others nodded in agreement, as in spoke, I wouldn't expect anything less, show us what you got. Even I shall show you all what I am capable of, I may not be as strong as the others, but I am formidable especially as a rook. Invicta spoke with a serious tone, as they all nodded in agreement. So you see John, we are giving our very best, and we want you to do the same, hope you don't mind giving us your very best shot. Issei spoke, to which John responded, you can count on it, dad, we won't lose. The rest of the original 15 nodded, as Juniper spoke, I expect you to, show me your best, and we shall do the same. The others nodded, as they waited for the team-ups that was going to happen, as they all knew that things are going to get intense soon enough, things will only get interesting from here on out. Azizel Cup Meeting Room, 9.30pm. Issei and the group watches Ajuka announce the matchups, as he spoke, Good evening everyone, I am Ajuka Beelzebub, and this is my co-host Tiamat. Issei had a slight frown when he saw her, if she tries anything, she is as good as dead, he knows Drake stole her treasure. But she killed many of his predecessors for the treasure, if she tries anything with him, she is going to die horribly. And god forbid if she tries anything with his children, there won't be a trace of her in the afterlife. Juniper noticed this, and internally sighed, she knew what Tiamat did, and she was going to deal with her personally if she attacked or demanded Issei, she was going to be dealt with accordingly. So that is her. She doesn't look that tough. Willow mused, as Drag spoke, you are not far off, she is nicknamed the strongest dragon king, Willow. Strongest day. I wouldn't mind having a spar with her, seeing that she is stated to be the strongest. Juniper nodded, as she had a grin and spoke, you are right on that one, I am so going to enjoy clashing with her once in a while. And then Issei could only look at them with an unamused look, they often used to keep them in check, as Mary muttered, Ice, have they always been like this? Yep, had to make sure they were in check most of the time, and was unable to handle them on her own, but they often used to fight a lot when we were young, especially during our first class soldier days. Issei remembered the fights that these two, mostly Juniper, used to get herself into, it was chaotic, but they were a group of four, and would always stick together, almost akin to best friends, except for Juniper and Issei who became lovers. Mary looked at them, as they looked at the screen and Tiamat spoke, alright then, the matchups will be displayed for the next day, and the day after and the first match will be happening tomorrow at 11am at the Op I Dragon Stadium, hope you all are present. The matchups showed the following, the teams were as follows. Tomorrow. Team Red Dragon of Arcadia vs Team Rhea's Gremory. Team 1-5 vs Team Lightning. The following day. Team Imperial Pure vs Team Spear of the Heavenly Emperor. Team White Dragon of Morning Star vs Team Sona Citri. They all looked in surprise, as suddenly Issei got a notification from the system, as he looked at it. Quest. Defeat and make an example out of Rhea's Gremory and her team. Rewards. 10,000, experience plus 20,000 lean. Failure. None. Issei couldn't help but have a smirk seeing what was on the screen, he could finally get back at Rhea's for everything she had done to him. He definitely was going to show her why he is called the hero of Arcadia, and defeat her like a certain hero does. Juniper saw this smirk and internally sighed, she had influenced Issei making him a bit sadistic in nature. She was not happy that he was influenced by her sadistic nature, as even her kids were sadistic in nature, to some extent that is. They had their father's protective and their mother's sadistic nature, that was now a deadly combo. Heh, it seems like we are going to battle against the Gremory crew. And spoke with a mocking tone, as Willow added, yep, I am so going to enjoy dealing with some of them. Let's not forget about the fact that I will clash with the Rooks. 
Invicta spoke, as he continued, let's see if they stand up to my attacks. You are right on that one, Invictus. And responded, as she spoke, I wouldn't even need the Macluin rings against them. It's overkill, but it is more or less a waste of energy, your blade should be enough. Juniper spoke as she responded to his say, so I presume Rhea's is yours. Oh definitely, she is my prey, I will deal with her personally. Issei spoke coldly, as Willow responded, I would advise you to show her true despair, make her lose any hope she has of winning against you. For once I will take your advice and destroy her. The others nodded in agreement, as they all would enjoy dealing with the Gremory girls once and for all. But the Gremory girls, they had their own thoughts on the matter, Irina who had also joined the team. She wanted to find some glory back, but their first match was against Issei's own team, as Rhea spoke while cheering the team up. Don't worry. We will win against those Arcadians. We will not lose. Akeno responded to Rhea's, but how, we don't even know how strong Issei has become, and not to mention, you remember Issei's wife, Juniper dealt with us. Then Issei put you in your place when you demanded to visit Arcadia. Rhea's gritted her teeth in anger, if anything she despised Issei even more for ruining her life, she then angrily spoke, it matters not, we have to defeat him if we have to regain our glory. But how, even Ravel refused to join us, she hates what happened to her, and wants to make her own way to regain her lost pride and respect. Ross was spoke, as she added, even Yudo and Gaspar left us, they have joined Team Sona Citri. You shouldn't have reminded me, those fools should have chosen differently. Rhea spoke, as she hated them removing their pieces and transferring themselves to Sona from behind her back, as she continued, we will win even without them. Are you sure, Rhea's one Isama? Asia asked to which Irina spoke, yeah, we don't even know what the others are capable of, that armored being and those two girls. It matters not, their aura seems human, so they are not that powerful, they can be defeated and dealt with. Rhea spoke with overconfidence, as the others were unsure of how this battle will end, they knew Mary alone was able to handle them three years earlier, but with her joining with Issei and her team, who knows on how powerful they really are. Besides, once we win against those Arcadians, we will finally regain our lost glory, everything we have lost will once again become ours. Rhea spoke, however her tone had madness as well, she detested what Issei had done, and his supposed death caused her to lose everything, but not anymore. Scene change. Time skip brought to you by Chibi Issei opening a present while Chibi Juniper watches from a distance. The next day. Apai Dragon Stadium, 11.30 am. The rating game between Team Red Dragon of Arcadia and Team Rhea's Gremory will begin, you will be shortly be teleported to your positions. The rating type game is standard, the one that defeats the king wins. Issei and his team were on one side, as they had taken their places, the rating game that was designated to them was a standard rating game, meaning they would soon be teleported into different locations. The location was Kuo Academy, as they had now occupied the principal's building, as he spoke, this does bring back some memories. Issei mused, as Willow spoke, you did tell us, this was where the rating game was against Riser Phoenix, right? You got that one right. Issei spoke, as he responded, this means that Rias would prefer to ambush and eliminate us, she used that tactic against us. She knows that we are powerful, so her best bet is to set up traps and try and eliminate us. Unfortunately for her, I know or have a prediction on where exactly she will be. Issei spoke as he unleashed analysis magic, to get a small map of the location, as Mary asked, Issei, what type of magic is that? This is analysis magic, my very own creation and magic type that allows me to analyze and detect any magical spell and location that is present, this allows me to create a sort of virtual map field that can let me detect and identify anything that would be present. The red dots represent us, allowing me to track you in real time using your magic signatures. The yellow dots on the other hand belong to the Gremory Peerage, which is the same as that, and they don't even know we are tracking them. Issei spoke, as Mary was amazed seeing this, while the others looked at the scene intently, as she saw one dot moving back and forth from different locations. Wait, why is that one dot constantly moving? And asked to which Issei spoke, simple, they are setting up traps against us, they know they can't clash against us in our full power. So what would you suggest? Willow asked to which Issei spoke, Willow, why don't you bring in some despair, destroy their building completely, once you are done, you can promote yourself into a pawn, gaining increased abilities, show them the power of the one-winged angel, what do you say? Willow only smiled in response, as she spoke, gladly. Juniper, would you deal with the queen, she may be sadistic, but she is also masochist. I will take care of Rias myself. You can deal with her, right? Juniper gave a sadistic grin as she spoke, if what you say about her is right, I will enjoy tormenting her for what she did to you. Nobody messes with my family and gets away with it. Mary Nee, you can deal with Asia and Arena right? Mary only smiled and responded, they have hardly improved since the last time, so it is nothing but a piece of cake for me. 
That means, the rooks can echo and Roswas are mine, right? Issei nodded to Invictus as he spoke, but you won't be alone, Drag will be assisting you for this fight, fair. Drag spoke from his sacred gear, right, and Juniper remember a new form that we will show that hybrid, she is going to be shocked to see it. Um, you bet, let's just say that she is going to get a shocker, since Issei is not the only one that can use the power of the Welsh dragon. Juniper spoke with a sadistic grin which made Issei shiver, he couldn't help but wonder what Juniper plans on doing with Akeno, while Willow and in sweat drop seeing her antics, as Mary asks. Does this happen often? Invictus responds, her majesty is the most sadistic out of any person, there is a reason why your brother and your nephews and nieces fear her wrath. Invicta spoke with a low tone, as Mary only nodded, she watched her brother soon grunt and speak. Well then let's get this over with. Issei spoke as the others agreed, as Issei spoke, oh this reminds me, Mary Ni I have something to give you. What Issei? Issei gave a device to Mary which he soon explained as she nodded, she was really going to enjoy what was coming to them, she wondered if she would use the device or her sacred gear. Juniper had a small smile, since Issei had found someone worthy of using that device. Scene change. So are the trap set. Riaz asks, to which Kaneko speaks, yes, Riaz Sama, they are all set, I do won't know what hit them. Excellent. Riaz declared as she now knew that she had to eliminate them one by one, before going after Issei himself, she was going to make the Emperor of Arcadia, her loyal servant once more. Riaz, do you think these traps will stop them? Roswas asked to which Riaz spoke, yes they will, I am confident of it. Roswas remained uncertain about this, she was having some doubts about. When all of a sudden, there was a massive explosion that completely engulfed the entire rooftop of the building, as they all screamed and held their heads in pain. The attacker was revealed to be Willow who had a smirk on her face. I hope you don't disappoint me, Gremory. Rias angrily glared at the attacker as Willow spoke with a cold tone. Now I shall give you despair. Thunderclouds swirled around the building and lightning strikes the entire location, as Rias and Akeno block the attack with their magic barriers. Now. Show me your strength. Willow commanded, as the audience remained shocked by Issei's team's pawn. Ajuka and Tiamat had their own comments about this. So this is the power of the one-winged angel, the strongest of Arcadia's women. She already has made an amazing opening play. Ajuka commented as Tiamat responded. You got that one right, Lord Beelzebub. The woman has already made her debut in such a powerful and imposing manner. She is one of the strongest that we will ever witness, the Red Dragon's team might be filled with monsters. Tiamat commented in kind, as she was curious at what else Issei was capable of, she was having second thoughts on provoking or fighting against Issei. Just how did you ambush us? Rhea shouted in disbelief and horror as Willow only gave a smirk. She looked to see an immediately ambush and tackled Zenobia sending her flying, she was able to regain her footing. Not bad, you might pose a challenge. And spoke with a chuckle as Zenobia was forced to fight her, and rushed towards him. Irina tried to assist her, but a magical blast pushed her away. Sorry, your fight is with me Arena. Mary spoke with a smile, as she generated a magical barrier that isolated Arena and Asia from them. No. Rhea shouted, as her team was falling apart, she now only had Akeno, Kaneko and Roswas, all of whom were on guard. However soon enough, two skeleton hands grabbed the two girls and sent them flying towards the gymnasium, as they took the damage from all the traps, as they saw their opponent to be the grim Invictus. Hello, guess you will be fighting me then. The two got frustrated, their whole team plan was gone in flames. This is not good. Rhea spoke, as someone spoke, oh it is going to get worse for you, red-haired bitch. The one who spoke was Juniper as she had two dragon wings, she eyed Akeno deciding to deal with her immediately. She blitzed in front of her and took her to the skies, as Rhea's glared at them. The UI will make you pay Rhea's in her anger, unleashed a very strong power of destruction lightning, as Issei only raised his hand and redirected the attack back towards Asia, as she screamed in pain. I Asia was down for the count, as Mary and Arena were surprised at what happened, however Mary had an idea of what happened, as she smirked knowing she had to deal with just Arena now. Riaz was horrified by this, but soon her horror turned to anger as she glared at Issei, who was smirking. Is that all? I am disappointed. Issei spoke with a mocking tone as Riaz glared at him with anger and hatred, Issei brought out his boosted gear and announced. Dragon Manifestation. Issei's magic brought out a huge magic circle which was Drag's own magic circle, as Drag was summoned into the battlefield. He roared into the battlefield as he spoke, finally, it is my time to shine. Everyone minus the Arcadian team was shocked by this revelation, while Rias and her team were fearful and horrified, Issei found a way to release the Welsh dragon into the battlefield to assist them. This is really something, Drag has been manifested into the battlefield. Issei Haidu, the Emperor of Arcadia has found a way to release Drag into the battlefield, the Gremory team is in deep problems, Ajuka commented, to which Tiamat seemed to have a scowl seeing her former love interest in the battlefield. 
she was not a big fan of him. However she soon compassed herself. You are right on that one, it seems like Arcadia has found its way to release Drake, now that begs the question. How did they achieve such feats and what else are they capable of? Tiamat muttered as the leaders wondered on how strong Issei had become since the past 35 years when he went missing, he was able to command and redirect Pod back to an enemy, he then summoned Dreg. What else is he capable of? The audience were shocked, but they soon cheered as well, Issei was even more beloved upon his return, their hero had returned. Even his parents were surprised as Goro asked, is that Dreg himself? Yes, Grandpa, Uncle Dreg can be summoned and released by Issei anytime he wants. Jade explained as she continued, however, he chooses to live in Issei's gear, rather than roam the skies of the Dragon Kingdom. Wait there is a Dragon Kingdom? Mickey asked with surprise as Bianca spoke, yes grandmother there is, they have their own freedom in speech, thought, free will and even have their own rights. Mickey nodded as someone spoke in the audience, this was a Bulfanus who had red hair and a mask. He was none other than Adam Taurus, one of the captains of the 501st. The legion lead by Issei Haidu was a general. Indeed ma'am, there are a lot of kingdoms, you will love it once his highness brings you here. Adam spoke as he continued, and that's not even mentioning the alien species that have allied themselves with Arcadia. Your son has done a lot for the kingdom in his 30 year reign. I also shall help and assist him in any way, just like he helped me and my twin sister. I will never forget him saving me and my sister, no matter what happens. The Haidu couple nodded in agreement, they were proud of the man their son has become, as Adam vividly remembered on how Issei had saved him during his expeditions with the 501st in the Four Kingdoms. Unlike many Arcadians, his general and emperor never outright hated, looked down upon or despised the people from the Four Kingdoms, he did hold some level of dislike towards them due to Nicholas, but he never let the judge the people of the Four Kingdoms. Back at the fight, Issei spoke, so Rias, do you still believe that you can defeat us? You. Rias growled as Issei responded, but I am not done yet. It is time to show the power I received when I became the hero of Arcadia and defeated the Black Arms. It is time to ranger up. Issei spoke as he was going to enjoy dealing with Rias once and for all. Issei summoned a Moblate, Morpher, which was a miniature mobile phone. He remembered on how he trained with this to gain to a different level. He soon brought out a ranger key, which was red in color, indicating he was the Red Ranger. Issei got into his position, as he put his key forward, Morpher near his chest and shouted, Gakai change. He brought the key into the keyhole and inserted it, placing the Morpher in the left, he soon twisted the Morpher opening it, as the Morpher announced. Gakager. The morphing sequence played out, as soon several letters came, as it transformed Issei into the Gakai Red Ranger, the leader of the Gakai Rangers. Issei was now the Red Ranger, as he got into his stance ready to fight his former master, Gakai Red. An explosion triggered when Issei got into his stance. The crowd's cheers increased even more. Seems like it is time for the ranger to shine. Issei spoke with a cheerful tone, as he looked at the audience and spoke, I want you all to call me Captain Marvelous in this form, not up I dragon, alright children. Yes Captain Marvelous. The children responded and cheered, as he looked at Rias and spoke, show me what you got, former Switch Princess. Rias gritted her teeth, she was definitely going to put her former pawn in her place. Would you look at that Haidu Issei is capable of transforming into a power ranger. He has become even more heroic and capable. He even has an explosive entrance. Rhea's grimery is done for in every way, unless she has a way to stop him. The Juka announced as Tiamat remained speechless unable to do much about the situation, she knew Issei was getting leagues above her, and she won't ever get her treasure back. She was starting to fear Issei, and she hated that. She reeled it in and gave her words. Indeed, it is a powerful transformation, but we wonder who else from the Haidu team was capable of doing so, unless the Rhea's Gremory team has something up her arsenal, there is nothing she can do. Tiamat spoke with a smile, although she was wondering what other's abilities does Issei have. Mary looked at this as she spoke, so that is how it is done. Mary remembered the device that her brother gave her, she soon brought out her own Mobilate and her own Ranger key, which was the yellow key. Bakai change. Mary shouted as she did the same as Issei did, and placed the key in her own Mobilate, as she transformed into her own Ranger, which was the yellow Gakai Ranger. Bakager. The morphing sequence played out, as soon several letters came, as it transformed Issei into the Gakai Yellow Ranger, the yellow of the Gakai Rangers. Gakai Yellow. Mary got into her stance, with an explosion happening behind her. The audience wondered how were these explosions happening. Arena and Asia, who had recovered a bit had seen what was going on, Mary then spoke, you will learn the power of the Gakai Yellow Ranger. Arena and Asia were terrified, she was dangerous without her powers, now she is even more dangerous. Her teammates were already on the edge and full fighting against their allies, and now they were really done for. 
Back at the audience, the Haidu couple were stunned as Rosemary explained that his dad's ranger power. He got this three years ago, after the end of the Civil War, as it states it is similar to how Power Rangers or Super Sentai operate. Although, dad rarely uses the Sentai power, he only uses it when the threat is too dangerous. Aqua spoke with a confused tone, as Goro asked, just how powerful are they? I have heard of them from a kid's cartoon series. But how strong are they? They are known to even contend with god-class beings, able to manipulate reality and other powers. They have the powers to destroy entire cities and countries like it is nothing, that depends on the Sentai Ranger that is chosen, some of the Rangers are capable of space travel, that is in their Zords, and they are capable of lot more. Jade explained as the couple nodded, they were able to adjust to the truth that is the supernatural and eventually Arcadia, so they were able to comprehend the situation. Although when did Mary Chan get the Ranger Yellow Key? Mickey asked to which Violet responded, I believe it was just for the rating game that Dad found a candidate for the Yellow Ranger. Are there other Rangers? Gasper asked excited to see his older brother become a Ranger, as John responded, yep, there is Gakai Blue, Gakai Green and Gakai Pink Ranger too. Well who are they? Kiba asked to which John responded, Uncle Victor is the Blue Ranger and Aunt Hikari is the Pink Ranger, they both are in the 501st Legion, now we have 5 Gakai Rangers. Then who is the Green? Goru asked to which Adam spoke sir. Adam revealed the Gakai Green Ranger key, as he spoke, the general chose me worthy for the Green Gakai Ranger power, and so far, I have been doing a good job. Yep, we were all in disbelief when Adam was chosen as the Green Ranger, at first. But seeing dad make the choice, we gave it a shot, and we haven't regretted it since. Adam has been an amazing ranger, but when times change, he does give his sister Eve a shot at becoming a ranger too. Olivia spoke, as Adam was considered to be one of the few that was given the power to become worthy of a ranger. The Haidu couple nodded again, as Goro asked. Is there any other ranger? Aside from the original five. John nodded as he spoke, yes, grandpa, there is one. However dad, never found anyone worthy to wield the power, the power of the silver ranger. Olivia explained as many wondered if there will be a silver ranger in the future. Bali was even more excited to combat Issei now, he wanted to see on how strong his rival had become, and what else is he capable of. He looked at Issei with complete interest and attention. Serzichas had his own thought seeing this, while well, he was happy for Issei, he couldn't help but be a little jealous of Issei's ranger suit, which surpassed his Satan ranger suit by a long shot. It did not help that Milikas was cheering for Issei, indicating he liked Issei's ranger suit more than his own ranger suit. Seraphal was also slightly jealous, however she was more happy and also cheering for Issei and Mary, as they seemed to be in their heroic forms. The only reason she was jealous was the same as Serzich's, the only difference being the color suits. The other leaders especially Azazel and Ajuka, were even more interested in what the Gakai Rangers were capable of, and were even more interested. Back with the others, they have already started to engage in the fight against Issei, and his team, Roswis and Kaneko, were already on their edge while fighting against Invictus, but when Drake joined in, they had no chance. Even when Kaneko went Shirin mode, Drake unleashed flames upon the two as they tried to defend themselves as Kaneko used Kasha to purify Invictus who backed away due to the pureness of the flames. Kasha. Kaneko shouted as she unleashed several spiritual flames towards Invictus, as he responded by unleashing several specters using the Umbra Lamp to defend himself. Drake used his own flames to counter Kasha, much to her annoyance. Attack. Invictus commanded as he unleashed the spirits onto her, as Kaneko tried to defend herself, but Invictus saw this as an opportunity, and used his strength to grab her by the tail. Gotcha. Kaneko was sent flying as he flung her, he soon commanded the ghosts which exploded upon impact causing her to scream in pain. Kaneko. Ross was shouted, but Drake unleashed a claw swipe forcing her to evade, oh I don't think so. Finish her Invictus. Gladly. Invictus responded as he dashed towards her and unleashed a series of very quick strikes, causing her to scream in pain again. He soon brought out a small blaster that he had personally designed and shot her causing to scream in pain, as a green light surrounded her, signaling her elimination. Hineko Taoju has been eliminated. What spectral power the Rook of the 501st has shown. It is truly amazing. Ajuka commented as Tiamat added, indeed, the team of Captain Marvelous is filled with such a powerful crew. Issei and Rias heard the announcement, as she used her power of destruction to attack Issei, but he leaped in the air, explosions being triggered behind, and made a battle cry. Ai Ai Issei shouted as he fired two blaster shots with Gakai gun, causing Rias to be sent flying. He acted quickly and fired two more dragon shots which sent her flying. She glanced towards Issei with anger and hatred, as Issei spoke. Is that all you have got, 3.5 years and there is barely any improvement, you are not even worth the effort of my other powers in this form, and not even my Gakai Galleon is needed to deal with someone like you. 
Issy spoke mockingly as Rias clenched her fists to the point of drawing blood. Back with N, she was overpowering Zenovia with relative ease, using her two blades were easily taking her down. You are claimed to be excellent swordsperson, right? Yet, you can't even lay a single dent on me, I don't even need my Makluin rings to beat someone like you. And spoke the last part in a hushed tone, as Zenovia was seething with anger, in her anger she blindly dashed towards and yelling with fury. And internally smirked, she was easily swayed like this. She knew how to deal with them, closing her eyes, she unleashed a very powerful dark stance, as she completely wiped out Zenovia with just one attack with relative ease and precision. And took a deep breath to recover herself as Zenovia looked in horror and fell to the ground, she took a brutal blow at her abdomen which was deep, as even her organs were being displayed, a green light was shown surrounding her. Seriously, too predictable and brash. And commented as the announcement took place. Zenovia Korda has been eliminated. What stunning display of swordsmanship and prowess, by and Ren. The Knight of the Red Dragon team is really powerful to have displayed such skills like that. Truly incredible. Ajuka commented as Tiamat added. Not only that she used her opponent's temper and anger to her advantage to finish the fight off quickly, she must have been truly the strongest to do so. Then had a smile, as she gave a glance towards Griselda who was looking back in sadness, she had heard of her guardian being affected by what her ward had done. And could only hope that she is dealt with accordingly. Back with Drag and Invictus, the duo were combining their attacks to completely overpower Roswis, as he unleashed several more specters towards her, forcing her to block with ease. However Drag soon unleashed a heavy breath storm towards her, causing her to stagger. Roswis shouted in pain, as she was completely charred, Drag then commanded, Invictus, it is time to end this once and for all. With pleasure. Invictus brought out his gun and used magic to improve on its power, as he unleashed a blast of dark electrical energy as she screamed in pain, as another announcement was spoke, as Roswis's body turned green and an announcement was made. Roswis has been eliminated, an amazing combination and teamwork by Drag and Invictus made short and quick work of the two with ease. Your words on the matter Tiamat. Tiamat took a deep breath and spoke. As much as I hate to say it, Drag has really became capable, it is almost like they were dealing with Drag at his prime. They had no chance against dealing with her. Tiamat's words were agreed by Ajuka, as they all cheered more, since the Grimmery Peerage was hated by the people due to what they had done to her hero. Now that their hero is back with his new and true friends, he was back to kicking ass. Drag could only scoff at this, as he spoke, I will be heading back to Juniper to assist her in the fight. Invictus nodded as he looked at his umbra lamp and gave a smile, thank you, all of you. The spirits cheered in response, as Invictus gave a smile. He soon looked at Drake flying off to head to the main building, as he reached Juniper. Seems like you are close to completion with your fight. Drake asked to which Juniper looked towards Akeno who was breathing heavily, as she spoke, yeah, but I want to make an example of her. Drake you thinking what I am thinking. Juniper spoke with a smile, as she spoke, so you want to use that huh? I don't mind. Juniper gave a glance to Issei, who kicked Rias behind and nodded, go ahead. Well then, let's go. Drake spoke as Juniper summoned a gold version of the boosted gear. Now then, Akeno witnessed the power of a true empress. Juniper started the chant of a new form that was only accessible to her. The crimson red dragon dwelling within me, awaken from your dominance. Juniper chanted as Drag added. The crimson heavenly dragon I possess within me, rise up to become a king and roar. The true empress of Arcadia. Juniper continued. The legacy and power of the arcs. Drag added his own words as both speak. Run from it, dread from it. Thou demise shall come, as thou watches we transcend the boundaries. Drake continued with Juniper speaking at the same time. Thou shall experience and fury of Arcadia's judgment. Diabolo's dragon Arcadia. The gear announced as Juniper glowed into a bright light once the chant began, she now was coated in a goldenish red armor, as it had blue and dark purple gems that matched her old and new armor. Drake entered into Juniper's boosted gear, the two gears shared the same space and were interconnected, as Ajuka announced seeing this transformation. First to say, then Vali and now Juniper. This really is something powerful that I have never witnessed, now we have three Diabolos dragons. There is no way Arya's Gremory is going to win this fight. Ajuka announced as Tiamat remained silent, having some questions as she added. But how was she able to achieve this? Tiamat asked to which Ajuka responded, that is something we need to ask them, but for now, we watch the show. The Haidu family was even more stunned by this, as Jade explained, I will explain, both the gears are similar to each other, as both mom and dad's boosted gear are carbon copies of each other, with only color changes being present, I was able to synchronize mother's own power with the gear such that she can use her own version of Diabolo's dragon. I see. Goru spoke with amazement, his granddaughter was really a genius as he added, but are there any differences between DXD God and DXD Arcadia? 
Yes, since dad's power is based on Great Red and Office's power, mom's power is based on her draconic magic and her own power. She was able to reach this by having a strong connection with dad and took years of training to unlock this power and master it. Gora nodded in agreement to Jade's words as Bali asked. I am curious to see what kind of abilities her armor is capable of. Vali spoke with a battle maniac grin, as Saffron muttered to Violet Ark, Dad was right about Vali, he really is a battle maniac. He and Mom will get along very well, when it comes to sparing. Violet spoke as Saffron nodded in agreement. Juniper flew into the air using her mechanical wings, and fired a barrage of dragon shots towards Akeno, as she barely was able to defend herself. She entered into her fallen angel mode, but it was not enough in any way. Juniper grinned sadistically, she was certainly going to enjoy this. Asia and Arena looked in horror, seeing on how Mary used her Gakai sabers to deflect any magical blasts that were aimed towards her, Irina responded by angelic magic rings towards her, as Mary used her Gakai blaster to destroy them. She dashed towards Arena, who barely blocked them with her strikes. She was powerful in her human form, but now in her ranger form, she had become much stronger and powerful than before. She constantly kept clashing with her, as her sabers increased to the point of reaching light speeds, as she kept doing so, till Arena was at the edge. She saw Asia trying to bring in Fafner, as she spoke, oh no you don't. Mary brought out her Gakai gun, as Issei spoke, Mary Ni, use your Gakai key, and do the same like you did for the morphing. Mary nodded as she spoke, understood. Gakai gun. Mary announced as she pressed a button revealing a keyhole. She put the key inside of the gun as it started to glow in a multicolored manner. Final wave. An announcement was triggered as she fired onto the two, causing a massive explosion. Irina and Asia took massive amounts of damage, as they screamed in pain. They soon glowed a green light as Mary turned her back on them with an explosion happening behind her. Asia Orgento and Irina Shidu have been eliminated in such a spectacular manner. This is really powerful attack that was able to take them down. Ajuka announced as Tiamat added. Even those explosions that Mary had triggered were also really something. She ended that fight with such a style. She is really something. Tiamat's words were agreed by Ajuka, as Rias looked in shock, only Akeno was remaining, who didn't stand a chance against Juniper, especially in her new armor. Juniper took into the skies and released two blasters and a center energy blaster as it started to load. Juniper boosted multiple times as she spoke, witness, your annihilation. Queen's Fury Juniper shouted as she unleashed a goldenish red beam unleashing towards her, causing her to scream with pain as a massive explosion was triggered with her barely surviving once the dust settled down. The Keno was breathing heavily, even in her fallen angel form, which comprised of six wings, she couldn't do much against Juniper who was in her armor. Why wouldn't you fall? Just how strong are you? Juniper only laughed at Akeno as she spoke in terms of strength, you ungrateful crow. Juniper closes the gap and slams her spear, which she brought from her old armor on top of Akeno, I am much stronger than you could possibly imagine. Akeno staggers to her knees as Juniper unleashed a storm of dragon flames, as Akeno responds with using water magic to protect herself, but Juniper closes the gap and kicks Akeno in the stomach, making her cough up. The daughter of Baraquiel was at her limit, she wouldn't be able to fight against the monster in front of her. You know, Issei told me a lot about you. Hating on your father and blaming him responsible when it was your pathetic clan that was responsible for your mother's death. Akeno got angry at this, as she responded with a lightning blast, only for Juniper to stab the spear onto Akeno's hand, making her scream in pain. I pity Baraquil for having a daughter like you, you have no value for a man that did so much for you, and blindly listened to that red-haired whore, and destroyed someone who was trying to change himself for her. Akeno cried from the pain and damage, as Juniper scoffed and spoke. Save your pity tears for someone who cares. Goodbye. Juniper used a strong magic spell comprising of lightning which caused Akeno to be eliminated from the fight, as Tiamat announced Akeno Himejima of Team Ria's Gremory has been eliminated. Juniper got up and looked at Baraquil who could only look down in sadness, she needed to talk to him and help the man. If Issei is right, he needs to be there for his daughter. The crushing elimination by the Empress's hands, the daughter of Baraquil, stood no chance against the power of Diabolo's dragon. Ajuka commented as Tiamat responded, you are right on that one, her power of the Red Dragon Emperor and Arcadian Empress is really something. Issei and Rias were only the ones that were fighting as Issei spoke, is that all? Why you? Rhea spoke as she shouted, you took everything from me I was going to be finally acknowledged and become powerful. Because of you now I can never be the rating game champion like I was once before and now I will make you pay. Hold up. Weren't you a rating game champion already? I mean, you did use me for that. So what do you want me for? Are you really losing your brain cells? Issei asked to which Rias was seething as she growled, you. No Rias, I once gave and would have given everything to you, and I did. 
I gave you my loyalty, my integrity and my everything. But what did you do? You repaid me with your betrayal and worse, you influenced even your own peerage into this stuff. Issei spoke coldly as he added, but it is time to end this, once and for all. Bakai Saber. Issei dashed towards Ria's and kept slashing her, as he waited for her to be exhausted, he soon kicked her up in the air, and kicked her sending flying towards the wall. Don't fuck with this ranger. Issei spoke as he brought out his Gakai saber. Issei soon pressed a button and brought his ranger key, as he inserted into the keyhole and twisted it, it then glowed multiple times as the Mobilade announced. Final wave. Issei dashed towards her, and slashed her completely. It was an energized slash as she completely fell to the ground, looking at Issei with horror and fear, as Issei was on the other side and twirled his blade and got into his pose. No, I cannot lose, not like this. Rhea started to grow in a green light, she then shouted, no. An explosion happened as Issei returned back to his normal self as he spoke, you should have been better, Rhea's Gremory. Rhea's Gremory has been eliminated. Issei Haidu wins, and by extension Team Red Dragon of Arcadia wins. That was an amazing and stylish match, where the Arcadians have shown what they are capable of. Please everyone gave them a round of applause, Ajuka announced as he cheered, even Issei's family and the Arcadians cheered for them, with Issei's children cheering for them the loudest. The others got near Issei, as Juniper reverted back to her normal self and gave a smile, as Mary powered down, she wanted to give the Mobilate back to Issei, but he refused. She was officially the Gakai Yellow Ranger now. Issei looked at the audience and got into his pose, as he puts his hand forward and spoke, until next time, everyone. Issei and his team headed back inside, as the crowd kept cheering him. He soon depowered himself and returned back to his original self. Now then, please at 7pm, the next match between Team 1-5 and Team Lightning will begin, so please stay tuned. The next match will be taking place in Ajuka Stadium, I will see you all there. Diamat spoke, as the matches were only going to get more interesting. Issei got a quest notification from the system. Quest completed. Defeat and make an example out of Rhea's Gremory and her team. Rewards. 10,000, experience plus 20,000 lean. Unbeknownst to them, the Black Arms were planning an attack for the event. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.